So after looking through my fridge, I noticed that I had deli meat and cheese. So I knew that I could easily whip up my turkey and cheese puff pastry. It's buttery, flaky, comforting, and a definite crowd pleaser. So thaw out your puff pastry and I'll show you how to make it. You know what the best part of puff pastry is? It's pretty impossible to mess up and anything tastes good in it. So for my turkey and cheese puff pastry, you're gonna need turkey, cheese, shallots, puff pastry, and an egg. I'm just slicing up three shallots. If you didn't wanna use shallots, you can just substitute with a small onion of your choice, red or white, doesn't really matter. Slice it up thinly. You can do it in rings like this or you could do it in half moons, up to you. So over medium heat, I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil. And you know me, SNP. You're just looking for softness and translucency, not really color, but the reason I go for shallots is because I think it has this really sweet and savory taste to it naturally. Okay, that's about good. You're gonna let these puppies cool and move on to your tart. So you grab your puff pastry that's thawed. Hmm, that actually looks kinda good, huh? and a little flour. You saw your puff pastry in the fridge overnight. You usually keep it in the freezer because it's gotta be nice and soft when you attempt to use it. So usually it comes in two sheets like this folded. Like a little butter envelope. Just go like that. Now all I'm gonna do is just make it a little bit flatter than it already is, which is kind of sad because it's already such a cute little square shape. So we're gonna make it slightly more rectangular rather than square. And don't worry about the edges being kind of squished because we're gonna trim them down a little bit anyway. I wish I was good at rolling out pastries, I'm really not. They always turn out so ugly. Ah! Oops. Okay, and I have a parchment paper lined tray. I'm gonna transfer this on there. Use your rolling pin. You probably saw me do this when I made my apple tart in my other video. Okay, there you go. I might as well roll out the other piece too while I'm at it. Round two, same exact thing. Try to aim for about the same exact size and shape as that, but if it's not, that's fine. You can fake it. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Okay, now I have some deli turkey. Actually, it's honey turkey, sliced thinly. I happen to have half a pound here, you know, because one eats sandwiches and that kind of stuff, but you really only need a quarter pound. If you want to make it extra meaty, you know, that's fine too. All I'm doing is making sure that I have a little bit of a border, about one inch all the way around, because you are gonna trim it down and you also need to put the other piece of puff pastry on top, so you need room. Again, if you wanna use ham instead of turkey, that would be really good too. Next, I have pepper jack cheese, and I bought it in this brick form because when I went shopping, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna use it for exactly. I just tend to buy bricks of cheese sometimes, especially when they're on sale. This is eight ounces of pepper jack cheese. This is the time that you can be as creative as you want because you can use Gruyere cheese, 
mozzarella, smoked mozzarella, brie. Brie and turkey would be really awesome. But I like this spice, a little hint of spice, a little kick that you get from the pepper jack. It adds another layer of flavor in my opinion, rather than just a cheese taste. So just put this aside. Grab your, at this point, cooled cooked shallots. Spread it out evenly. Oh, no waste. Now you get your sliced pepper jack cheese. So eight ounces is the whole block. That's easy to remember, right? These remind me of piano keys. Makes me just want to play chopsticks. Ding, 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 ding. You guys, I'm so lucky because I had exactly one egg left in the fridge, and that's perfect. You just add a tablespoon of water and whisk it together, and then that's your egg wash. And that's our glue to hold the top to the bottom. Just get a brush, a pastry brush. I love these guys, the little silicone ones, because they're easy to clean. And as best as you can, try to match up the two pieces together. And yeah, they're gonna be a little bit misshapen and not exact, but that is totally fine. Oh yeah, there you go. You grab your paring knife and just kind of trim it down a smidge just so that the two pieces are even. But like I said, you don't have to be too precious about this because when it puffs up in the oven, you can't really notice. I'm purposely not trimming down too much because I'm kind of a puff pastry pig. So I want as much puff pastry to remain on here as possible. You grab a fork and press down with the tines of the fork and crimp it down, just like when you crimp down a pie crust. This looks to me like one big giant Pop-Tart. The last two steps is to wash the whole thing with egg wash just so that it gets a nice golden brown color. Did you guys ever watch that show on PBS growing up with uh, the painter? Paint those happy little trees. Thumbs up if you know what I'm talking about. Last step is you need some air ventilation so some steam can escape. So you're just gonna try to go lightly into the first layer only. Try not to move around your cheese and all the goodies that are underneath. So just kind of poke at it. And you know, I'm gonna make about six smallish slits. You need that steam to escape so your crust doesn't get soggy as it all heats up inside. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're just gonna pop this in for anywhere, I would say between 25 and 30 minutes, but it also depends on the hotness of your oven and uh, just check it after that. It might take longer. So what happens is usually the outside of the crust gets cooked and puffy, but then the bottom and the middle tends to be a little bit softer and wetter. So just make sure you use a spatula and check underneath to see that it's crispy on the bottom. Into the oven we go. You are my favorite song that I've ever heard. Boy, oh my sunshine, yes you are So much more You are the best friend that I have ever had I basically can't wait any longer to try this. It came out of the oven about 25 minutes and I let it cool just a little bit before I sliced into it, but dude, here we go. I'm just gonna put it out there and say, you're crazy if you don't give this recipe a try. The flakiness of the pastry, with the savoriness of those shallots, and a little bit of spicy kick from the pepper jack cheese is just comfort at its best. I mean, this would be perfect with a cup of soup. How about some suggestions? You can really use anything you want, like I said before. Even some roast beef, 
cheddar cheese and horseradish sauce would be amazing. And if you're feeling a little sad, say like you can't find puff pastry, you could still whip up these fillings inside of two tortillas and make a quesadilla and it'll still have that delicious flavor. Make a glorified grilled cheese sandwich. I mean, this is perfect for appetizers for a party or eat it as lunch or a, a decadent brunch with a cup of soup and a side salad. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, remember to tell us by pushing like, leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. That bite was just for you. I could really go for a bowl of tomato soup. Mm -mm. What could be better than this? Not much.